Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft video brought to you by Rob's Mind. Today we are going to be checking out something pretty cool. It is from uh, the newest contraption added to my Let's Play series. That is my 72 uh, Furnace Super Smelter. Now this thing is pretty cool. It is not exactly the prettiest Super Smelter I've ever seen, but man, is this thing efficient. Yes, yes it is. So let's go ahead and go over here and throw in our fuel into the input side. We're using coal. Uh, you can see that this hopper minecart will pull it out extremely quickly, getting about two items per furnace. Then it will dispatch, go through, and come back to restock on another two items per furnace. So that is pretty cool. It's a pretty efficient fueling system, and as you can see, that was probably about... 10, maybe 12 seconds, and we have already gotten rid of over two stacks of coal. So right here, we've got the smeltable inputs. Now this one is my favorite because of the way that it is just perfectly timed. So if we take a look at this, this hopper minecart should fill up with exactly 72 items, which is a stack plus 8. As soon as that happens, we should see the next one arrive and get the same exact amount of items. We'll go ahead and watch it this time. I don't know why I clicked off of it. There we go. So we get a stack plus eight. And then this, as soon as it runs out, you'll see that the transition is almost seamless. There's just like a second where nothing is getting picked up. And if we open this up, you can see that we have already engaged the double hopper speed. That is the actual slow point of this design is just the hopper speed. You can even see that whenever things are getting smelted, it's almost perfectly timed. It's a little on the slow side. <laughs> but yeah, it is It is getting uh, smelting almost exactly one item per 10 seconds. And that is exactly what you want with a, a super smelter. That makes it super efficient and not get backed up very much. But yeah, this thing is super fast. I love it. Uh, let's talk dimensions. This thing is 12 blocks wide. 44 blocks long and seven blocks in height that is the total dimensions for the entire build obviously you've got some dead space on the sides of the furnaces now just to be clear all of the items that you should need uh should be in the video description if they're not please do scream at me because that is uh that is not cool <laughs> i mean to leave those in the description sometimes i forget though but uh, we're not going to go through listing off every single item. This is the amount of items that you are going to need, give or take. A, just, just It's a little bit overestimated on the things like the rails and the blocks. So that should be everything that you need. Uh, you don't need blocks of iron, obviously. You don't have to use glass blocks. You can build this whole thing out of dirt, but it is expensive. You need a lot of hoppers. The redstone and the levers... What is up with those is that it's just our power source for the blocks. So you can for the uh, for the powered rails. So you can just use a block and a lever like this, or you can use a redstone block like this. Doesn't matter. I'm using redstone blocks because I'm in creative, uh, but I would probably use that in survival anyways. Redstone's all over the place underground. So the first thing you're going to want to do is clear out your area and gather your resources. Obviously, once you've got that done, though, you can decide which side of this you want to be your front. The front will be signified by where your item inputs and collection system are going to go. Other than that, it's going to be all of your furnaces and hoppers in the back. So once you've got that figured out, you're going to go to the right side and count off one, two, three, four, five, and six blocks. That will be uh, the axis we're going to get started on. And then from there, go one, two, three, four, five, six as well to this point here and that will actually be where we place down our double chest that is the starting point for our entire system from there we are just gonna go and put 36 hoppers on each side all feeding into that chest so let's go ahead and do that now After that, you're going to want to put furnaces on top of each and every one of your hoppers, like so. And once you've got that and all done, you are going to want to grab more hoppers and place one on the top and one on the back of every single furnace. And now you have something that should look like it has bankrupted you of every single bit of your iron. 
the next thing that you are going to want to do is go ahead and grab your powered reels and bankrupt yourself of all of your gold. Now, I do recommend that you go ahead and place blocks coming out on these four right here. It doesn't matter which ones you do it on. It will make things a lot easier for you, though, because you'll notice that if you just go in a straight line, like, oh, I'm going to go all the way end to end, and then you come over here like, oh, let's go ahead and, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're going to end up with. So instead, if you run it out by one block, you can go ahead and fearlessly connect right next to it, obviously until you run to a parallel path. So there we go. Have fun placing all of those, guys. So now that we've got all of our gold on there in the forms of powered rails, let's go ahead and connect these up in the back. The way that we're going to do that is just like this. You'll place a powered rail in the center, and on your corner blocks, you will place regular rails. Then we're going to go ahead and wrap this side all the way around. Just like that. And we'll do this a similar way. So only the regular rails on the corners. The rest are powered rails. Then all we got to worry about is powering these things up. So obviously you'll place your block with the lever or your redstone block, whichever you choose. And then on the bottom layer, I've been going five blocks in. So one, two, three, four, five. And then do it from the other side as well. So one, two, three, four, five. Just like that. And then I've been splitting the difference in the middle. It doesn't really matter. I just do it for symmetry reasons. But you can go ahead and do it however you want. Just make sure all of your rails are powered. Or else you're going to cry whenever you can't figure out why your smelter isn't working. Now to start with the actual redstone with this thing. We are going to start on this right hand side over here. That will be our uh, fuel item input. Now the first thing we are going to do is build up three blocks diagonal from right here. So that's one, two, and three. Alright. After that we are going to place in some rails. So we'll need to remove this rail temporarily. Place in a detector rail. A regular rail and then a temporary rail up here. You can go ahead and remove the temporary one. Place in your double chest on top of that. And now we can go ahead and come over to the left side and place one solid block up here. That will be our return block. If you don't have that block in place, your hopper minecart's just going to launch off the end. So that's no good. We don't want that. Now let's go ahead and grab, uh, grab our fence gate and place it right here on the end of the double chest. Put a hopper minecart down there on that rail. Now let's grab the rest of our redstone components and go ahead and install the actual redstone. And we will start that from right here at this detector rail. We'll place one block out and two blocks diagonal to that like this. Redstone on the surface of all three of those blocks. On top of the first redstone place a sticky piston with an observer pointing its red dot into the fence gate. After that, you are going to want to create the pulse extender. So we'll come out uh, six blocks on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the same this way. Now we can add in our comparators. So on this side, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Block up. Piece of redstone right here. And then five comparators going back the other way. Next thing we are going to do is place a block next to this observer, then a block diagonal to that, like so, and a block back diagonal to that to make this little V formation here. Place a comparator right there in the center of that. Torch goes on the side of this block here. Then you'll place a sticky piston on the face of the torch, observer on the face of the piston, and a block on the back side of the observer. Now that is actually the entire coal input side complete. We can test that by just placing in a couple stacks of coal here. Uh, normally it would get enough for uh, enough to power all of these furnaces, give them all two items apiece. But right here I just kind of put in a test amount so that we can just see it in action. And there it goes. Now with this side we are going to go ahead and start 
by placing in. We've got our one block extended with the powered rail on top. That is good. We're going to keep it. We'll go out another and then up a block. On those two, we're going to place regular rails, remove one of them, and then place in your double chest. We'll go directly underneath that. Go down two, remove one of the blocks in the middle, and we'll have this kind of formation right here. Then we can go ahead and carry this out. One, two, three. We will place a powered block here. Then whatever block you're using, and another powered block right there. Make sure to have a solid block diagonal to that. Otherwise, if it's a, a transparent block, this will not work properly. And then we can just kind of put in our rails. Uh, the powered rails are on the powered blocks, obviously. And then regular rails on everything except for this last one. Now, I did forget that these are going to connect. So we'll have to remove this chest, replace this rail, and re-remove it. Then we're free to replace the chest. Yeah, the rails in this build are quite annoying. But now let's build in the Hopper Minecart Magazine by going up four blocks from this solid block. So one, two, three, and four. We'll build uh, the th uh, three of the sides to be this height. And then the final side is going to be one block lower. So this side over here is actually going to stop right there. And now we can just kind of... Now we can just kind of connect this up with the glass. So we've got this extended one. Now we're going to build up. Go diagonally until we are on the same level like that. And then connect these across. Now we can go ahead and do the really annoying part. You'll notice that I don't have a hopper mine card here right now. That's because I forgot that whenever we go ahead and connect all of this, it's going to do that number. Therefore, whoops, we're going to have to uh, kind of break this whole system and rebuild it. So let's go ahead and place in our rails going up. And now this shouldn't interfere. We can place in our two rails again. One there, one there. Remove that and put our chest on top. And now we're free to finish putting in the rest of our rails. One thing I almost forgot is we are going to need a fence gate right uh, right here above that solid block and another fence gate right here in front of this chest. Now let's grab up the rest of our redstone components and we can go ahead and put in the redstone after we add in the three hopper mine guards. So one, two, three. That will all stack up neatly in the magazine. Now let's grab the, that redstone. And to start the actual redstone for this side, we're going to be looking at our uh, smeltable input chest right here. And we're going to start out by placing a block right there and two blocks diagonal like this. Similar to what we did in the other side, but not quite the same. We'll need redstone blo uh, dust on all three of those. Right next to this fence gate, we will actually need a solid block. So if you don't have that already, go ahead and add that now. And then we can go ahead and place in a sticky piston right here with an observer on its face. Got to have the back of it pointing into this block, though. So the face will be pointing the opposite direction. Now we're ready to add the pulse extender for this side, we'll be, which will be a lot smaller than the other side. Three, four, five, and six blocks, just like that. Place a block up here. You can remove the block underneath it if you want to. It's up to you. Then two comparators, two comparators the other way, and a piece of redstone dust right there. That is our pulse extender that will pull out exactly 72 items from here. Now we need to go ahead and place a block up right there with a redstone torch on the block and a block above the torch. That will open up our fence gate. Anytime something trips this detector rail, it will close the fence gate and run its whole cycle. Now we need to place a block on the side of this rail, a comparator right here, 
sticky piston right here and an observer right there i do want to do a quick shout out to jake J Crazy NZA, who actually left me a comment down in my comments section, which did compact this a little bit. I had two slime blocks right there. I didn't think of rotating that piston 90 degrees. So, like I say, thank you for that. Now the final piece of our puzzle is a redstone torch on the back end of this piston. And that is our system all the way 100% complete. Let's go ahead and grab a few stacks of iron and give it a quick test. So if we place that in, you will see this whole system kick into gear just like that. We should see a hopper minecart released. Should pick up exactly 72 items and then disperse. There it is. Immediately after, one pulls right up and does the same thing. That is good. That's what I like to see. Let's see how our furnaces are doing over here. All of them lighting up and all of them depositing the smeltables right into this chest here. So that is very cool. That is the whole system functional and all complete. And as always, if you did find this useful, please do hit that like button, leave me a comment, and please do subscribe to the channel if you're new. It helps me a ton. Thanks so much, guys. I will see you in the next one. See ya.